Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to generate load combinations and specify analysis commands in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. In this particular video, we will be generating our load combinations and performing a multi-run P-delta analysis considering several different types of loads that are already been created for a STAD Pro Physical Model. Now, before we get into generating the load combinations, let's take a look at the load cases that have already been defined. In the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon toolbar, select the load cases option. Here we'll be able to see all of the general or basic primary load cases that have been created. This model contains dead load, live load, wind load in both the X and Z directions. In addition to that, this model also contains IBC static seismic load cases. To review that information, we can go to the spreadsheet tab of the ribbon toolbar and select the seismic load cases option. Here we can see that we have two seismic load cases that have been defined in both the X and Z horizontal directions. And both of these are using a load definition. To review your load definition, you can select the catalog tab in the ribbon toolbar, and you can see that a seismic definition has been created. We are now at the point where we're ready to generate our load combinations. Now, as previously mentioned, we are preparing to perform a P delta analysis for this particular model. Now in STAD Pro, you have two different types of load combinations that you can generate. You can create traditional load combinations where a set of load results will be combined algebraically to produce a superimposed set of results for post-processing, or you can create repeat load cases. A repeat load case is basically a primary load case that we use combinations of previously defined primary load cases. Whenever you're performing any type of second order analysis, including a P-delta analysis, it will be necessary to generate repeat style load cases instead of traditional load combinations. We will now turn our attention back to our STAD Pro model and the STAD Pro physical modeler where we're ready to start generating our load combinations. Before we do that, I'm gonna take a look at the analysis model options to ensure that repeat load cases will be created when generating the load combinations. To do that, select the data tab in the ribbon toolbar and then click on the options icon. Within the options dialog, select the analysis model tab and ensure that the repeat primary load cases radio button is selected in the combination load case category. Let's finish this off by clicking OK. We are now ready to generate our load combinations. To do that, go to the loading tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the automatic combinations icon. Within the automatic combinations dialog, I'm gonna select the appropriate code and table for my model. I have selected the ASCE 716 code and the strength design with live load less than 100 PSF for the table. This is an LRFD style load combination generator. If you would like some additional information regarding any of the load combination generators, click on the manage rules button to review the load combinations and factors that will be assigned to each. Here I can see the table I've currently selected along with all the load combinations. 
Now, when you're generating repeat style load cases, you have the option to include load groups or notional loads. Now, for this particular model, I have not created any primary load cases in the load groups category, so I'm going to leave that option unselected. In addition, for this particular model, I'm performing just a typical P delta analysis, not a full direct analysis, so therefore notional loads wouldn't be required. Once I'm satisfied with all my inputs, I will click OK, which will ask the program to officially generate the load combinations. Once the load combinations are generated, the load combination spreadsheet will be available in the data area, and you'll see all of your load combinations that were created in the previous step. At this point, we are ready to specify our analysis commands. Let's go to the Loading tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and click on the Analysis Commands icon. Now for this particular model, we have a few things that we want to think about when specifying our analysis command. The first thing is, what, are you, what type of analysis are you going to be performing for your overall design? For this particular model, I will be performing a P-delta analysis. The other thing I need to think about is, am I required to perform a multi-run analysis for this particular model? And so let's discuss when a multi-run analysis would be required in STAD Pro. The first scenario would be if your model contains tension or compression only members with wind or seismic. If your model does contain tension or compression only members, you will have to analyze each wind and seismic load case individually and then reset the stiffness matrix before analyzing the next load case. Now this model does not contain any tension only or compression only members, so we are not required to create a multi-run analysis for that particular scenario. The second scenario for which you may require a multi-run analysis is if you have seismic loads with repeat load cases. So if your model contains IBC seismic loads and those loads are then referenced in a reference and those loads are then referenced in a repeat load case later on, you will have to analyze each seismic load case individually and then reset the stiffness matrix before analyzing the next load case. Now for this particular model, we do have IBC seismic loads. They are referenced in repeat load cases later, so we are required to have a multi-run analysis. Now, according to the rule I just mentioned, we are going to analyze each seismic load case individually. My model contains two IBC seismic load cases, so I need two additional analysis sets. The analysis sets that belong with each of the seismic load cases should appear first in the list, and I can reorder the analysis sets by clicking the up or down buttons. So let's go ahead and focus on our analysis sets that will be required for our seismic load case. And let's start with analysis set number two. Here, I'm gonna select the analysis option, which will be set to linear elastic. And then I'll go to the load conditions area. Here, I'm gonna grab my first seismic load case and move it over to my selected window. When I do that, we're gonna notice that the green check mark indicates that this is now a valid analysis set with at least one load case assigned to it. Let's proceed on and select analysis set number three. I'm gonna to return to the configuration area, review my options, and then go to the load conditions tab. Here, I'm gonna assign the seismic load in the other direction to this load, to this analysis set. Again, we're gonna see that this is now a valid analysis set. Now, if your model contains more than two IBC seismic load cases, you may need additional analysis sets to complete that process. Let's go ahead and finish up with our last analysis set. This is where we're going to tell the program what type of analysis we're doing for the overall model. For this particular model, I will be performing a P delta analysis and I'm going to ask it to perform an iterative solution. 
In addition to that, I'm also going to ask the program to consider the small p delta effects. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the load conditions area. Now, any load case that's defined in your model can be assigned to only one analysis set, and every load case must be assigned to an analysis set before it is brought over to the analytical modeler. My seismic loads are already assigned to analysis sets two and three. We can see that my dead load, live load, and wind loads are also already assigned to analysis set one. Now, technically, my load combinations are defined as reference load, are defined as repeat load cases, so those also need to be assigned to an analysis set, and they will be assigned to the analysis set that represents the analysis for the entire model. So here I can see all of those combinations, and I'm going to move them over to the selected area. When this window is empty, I do know that all load cases have now been assigned to an analysis set. Let's finish this off by clicking OK, and we will save our model. Now at this point, we're ready to send this information over to the STAD Pro Analytical Modeler. To do that, we will select the Model tab in our ribbon toolbar and tell the program we want to return to the Analytical Modeler. Once the analytical model is created successfully, we can click OK and close the physical modeler. Once we are in the STAD Pro analytical modeler, we can review the information that we just created in the physical modeler. The first step in our workflow that we followed for this video was to generate our load combinations. We wanted to be sure that we generated repeat style load combinations, which are appropriate for a second order analysis, including a P delta analysis. Here, if I take a look at my load combinations, I can see that those are defined as repeat load cases. The second step in our workflow was to specify our analysis commands. Now again, since this model contains IBC seismic loads, and those loads are then referenced into a repeat load case, I do need to analyze each seismic load case individually, and then reset the stiffness matrix. Here I can see that my perform analysis command has been assigned to each of the IBC seismic load cases as I specified in the physical modeler. In addition to that, when the analytical modeler was, model was created, the program automatically added the change command in for me, which will reset the stiffness matrix before analyzing the next load case. Lastly, I can also see the P delta iterative analysis command has been added at the end of the input file. There's one last command that I do want to point your attention to. Whenever you're performing a multi-run analysis in STAD Pro, you are required to invoke the setNL command. What the setNL command does for you is it tells the program to set aside some additional memory space for information to be added after an analysis already takes place. You want to set this property to something greater than or equal to the total number of load cases that are present in your model. As we can see in our input file, the STAD Pro Physical Modeler already automatically invoked this command for us, so that's an extra step that we don't have to perform. Now at this point, we would be ready to perform the analysis and review the results in the STAD Pro Analytical Modeler. Once you do that, you are ready to move on to the design phase of your workflow. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.